Hiya folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Quest for Glory 1 VGA, and when last we left off, we are one screen away from Erasmus' home. But we're actually a long walk and a mountain climb away from Erasmus' home, and we do not have the stamina to do that without falling face first on the ground halfway up. So, let us rest. We shall rest for a single hour, and that should probably be enough. How much stamina do we have now? We have 23 out of 96, that is very impressive. Also, agility almost at 100, and that's awesome. Also, weapon use almost at 100, that's awesome. We should probably have enough to get up there. Now, this is a save from before we made any attempts to climb up the mountain. We have done it numerous times, and every time we were shoved back down by the gargoyle because we got questions wrong. I have a feeling I know what the gargoyle was referencing by answering questions three. But I want to be absolutely sure, so let's go! There is the sign. It says stuff. And here is the second sign that says the trespassers will be towed. Hopefully we're not going to be classed as a trespasser if we can get the questions right. Here's the hoping, eh? There are probably loads of ways to get it wrong. And while I could show off every single one, it would take a long, long time. Maybe at the very end I'll do that. But right now, we are here. And we didn't fall down. You feel as though you have just scaled the Matterhorn in full armor. What a climb! You can see all of Spielberg Valley from here. After you finally catch your breath, you see that you have reached the rather eccentric looking house that you saw from below. There is an ugly gargoyle above the entrance. Hello! Stand fast! He who would the wizard see first must answer questions three. What is your name? We are Derek. What is your reference? Oh, yeah, we're referencing this, are we? What is your quest? Uh, we want glory. What is the mean airspeed of an unlatent swallow? Uh, hmm. Well, that's gonna get us kicked out. Definitely referencing stuff now. Yeah, we're gonna go with the top one. African or European? Hmm, I have no idea. Have to ask the boss sometime. Oh well, you win. The wizard will see you now. Go directly up to the tower. Do not dally. Yay! The stone creature looks like it's bored. Wouldn't you be? You see the purple home of someone who must enjoy its precarious perch on the peak. There's also this door. Through the open door, you can see that the inside of Erasmus' tower is even more unusual than the outside. Now we're gonna save, because we've managed to get in. We could talk to you some more, I suppose. You get no response. Okay, let's go. This room is full of odds, ends, and stuff. The wizard must be a real character. What do we have here? There is a strange figure on the bookshelf. It looks like an overgrown rat wearing a wizard's hat. Huh. The poor stuffed peacock seems bedraggled, worn, and overused. It's the famous Duncan Dragon! You haven't seen one of those in years! This is a Zen lamp. You feel enlightened in its presence. Your eyes are drawn to the eyes of the figure in the portrait. His intense stare is unnerving. This would not be someone to trifle with, for he looks subtle and quick to anger. Erasmus likes to keep his suits well ironed. <laughs> oh, I get that reference. It was a moderately large and fearful dragon at one time. The stupid stool stands there steadily. This room is full of odds and ends. Okay. Through the portal to the west stands a small sitting room. Through the portal to the east stands sits a standing room only. Uh -huh. And we were told to go north, so let's not go north, and instead go any other way but north. This is going to get people, uh, namely me, into trouble. Naughty, naughty, you were told to go straight up the stairs. Yep, that's gonna take me straight down here. We're gonna go straight up the stairs. Let's, uh, let's not trifle with a wizard. We are not a wizard, and even if we were, we are nowhere near as powerful as this wizard. Up the stairs we go! Ah! Ah! He 
was watching us the whole time. Come in and sit down. Hello. Fenris, our guest has arrived. Cheese, please. Ah, that's your familiar. Magic cheese. Ah. We have made it. We're going to save. Also going to look around. You are certain those are curtains. These stones are the base of a tower spire. To the east, the peaks of the Wolfsbane Mountains are clearly visible. The table is elaborately carved on the sides. Erasmus has a teacup on the table in front of him. Is it true that a monster can't hurt you if you're carrying a torch? No. Actually, it depends on how fast you carry it! Ho <laughs> ho ho! Oh, I like this guy already. Fenris looks back at you with a grin. Hello, Fenris. Let's ask about Fenris. What's there to say? For a rat, I'm a really great guy. Although for such a great guy, you're really a rat. Ah, so you're a rat, not a mouse. Talk about Erasmus. Erasmus is my familiar. Isn't that the other way around? Familiar is my Erasmus? Well, I've always found Erasmus to be overly familiar. No, no, I mean, aren't you my familiar? <laughs> All these years, and you still don't know. Oh, I like these two already. Behind the wizard's stern and forbidding appearance, you see a twinkle in his eye. You suspect that he is not always as serious as he appears. I I've noticed that already. Hello, you. Let's talk about Erasmus. I am a wizard of some renown. Apparently so. Talk about Fenris. What am I? Some sort of object? Am I invisible or something that you talk about me behind my back in front of my face? Sheesh. No respect. It's hard to take anyone very seriously who wears such a ridiculous hat. Uh, um, let's not talk about your hat. Let's talk about magic. If magic be the loot of life, play on! I get that reference. The quote was music, not magic, and it was food, not loot. How about magic makes the world go round? Money makes the world go round. Oh, very well then. To put it in my own words, magic is the essence and the soul of life, and the wizard is her poet. Actually, it was Merlin who said that first, but he used the term magician, not wizard. Furnace, there are times when you would look better as a newt. Why is that? Because newts can't talk. Neither can most rats. Do you know the difference between a wounded triceratops and a magic user casting the fly spell? N no. One is a raging Saurus, and the other is a soaring Magus! I figured one was a dying lizard, and the other was a flying wizard. Sorry, Furnace, but he who tells the joke gets to make up the punchlines. Okay, I love these two already. Let's talk about, uh... Ooh, lots we can talk about here, like Zara. Zara has a real flair for the theatric. Her entrance at the magic shop is a bit showy, but effective. It's a pity she has no sense of humor. Just because she doesn't laugh at your jokes doesn't mean she lacks a sense of humor. It just means she has good taste. Ooh! Ooh, burn there! Talk about Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is good at curses and shape-changing spells. She has a nasty temper and doesn't believe in safe hex. So it's best to stay on her good side. I get that reference. You have to watch her. She cheats her cards. Well, so do you. She started it first. Besides, I wanted her to get a taste of her own medicine. Shame she still beats you. Oh, so you play cards with, uh... With, uh, Baba Yaga. It would be best to wait until the Rassus puts down his cup of tea before asking any questions. Okay, that is a bit of attention to detail I really love. Let's talk about curses. The curse Baba Yaga placed upon Baron von Spielberg was a fine example of creative cursing. Upon von Spielberg and all his clan, this the curse I now demand. What I will shall come full measure, so ye shall lose all that ye treasure. Of course, the problem is that for every curse there is the equal and opposite counter curse. Counter curse? A counter curse is a cure for a curse. It usually works. It usually works against the one who cast the curse in the first place. The counter curse for the curse of the Baron goes. Come a hero from the east. Free the man from in the beast. Bring the child from out the band. Drive the cursor from the land. So to break the curse, a hero must get rid of Baba Yaga in addition to all the other things. It does not reflect well on Baba Yaga. Nothing reflects well upon that ogress. She has the face that would break she has a face that would break anything but a magic mirror. 
Hint, hint. Also, that's capitalized. Let's talk about a magic mirror. There are many types of magic mirrors. One of the more common types is the one that has a strange face popping out every so often. It reminds me of the one in the master bedroom. Th that's not magical. No, but it does have a strange face peering from it whenever you're in the room. Ha <laughs> ha! At any rate, I used to have a nice magic hand mirror I misplaced around here somewhere. It could be used to reflect a spell back upon the caster. That sounds useful. So if you happen upon a small golden magic mirror with a dragon handle on it, you'll know it's mine. It was the flagon with the dragon. The mirror had a leer. Oh, that's right. Well, if you find a magic mirror with a face on it, you'll know it reflects spells. Excellent! What about... That's a long conversation tree. What about... Irana? Never met her! I only built this vacation home here a century. A vacation home?! Irana has a nice little magical meadow in her name northwest of here. Pretty respectable spellcaster, I imagine. Her protection spell she cast over town's fairly good, but I believe she missed a few places. You're just jealous because the only thing anyone named after you was a soft drink. I thought that Erasmus' Razzle Dazzle Root Beer was a wonderful name for a product. It's a shame the company went broke afterwards. Oh, protection spell. Irana's spell prevents the use of excessive violence or hostile magic within Spielberg's walls, with the exception of a couple of places. What places? Looks to me as if she missed the back part of the alley, and the spell only applies to areas in town above the ground. Pretty shoddy if you ask me. Nobody asked you. So, the alley is not safe, and anyone underground is not safe. Noted. What about spellcasters? Basically, anyone who uses magic is a magic user. Anyone who casts spells is a spellcaster. However, to be a wizard, you need to have undergone initiation into the Wizards Institute of Technosory in the land of Shipgear. Magicians and sorcerers are wizards who specialize. I myself strive to master all aspects of magic, unlike those narrow-minded specialists. You wouldn't want to lose your amateur standing, after all. I prefer to think of myself as a dilettante. Does that mean that you tease pickles? Oh dear. Initiation. You need to complete your quest before you can become initiated as a wizard. I also need to have magic. Spells. It's important for a magic user to know as many spells as possible. You never know just what might come in handy. Okay, uh, nothing else here. What about the brigands? They are supposed to have a warlock working with them. From what I've seen, he's more a nincompoop than a necromancer. Do you know what you get when a Tyrannosaurus running 25 miles per hour eastward meets another Tyrannosaurus running 50 miles an hour westward? No? Tyrannosaurus Rex! <sighs> well played, Erasmus, well played. Nincompoop. Let's talk about that. He laughs too much when he casts his spells. That's because his jokes are funnier than yours. Ooh, another burn. Warlock. The only thing I've seen the brigand warlock cast is sneezing powder. Necromancer? Isn't that the vampire who fell in love with throats? No, no, that's a necromancer. A necromancer is a magic user who has a rather unsavory relationship with corpses. Does that mean a necromancer has ghoul friends? It means a necromancer is someone who deals with the undead. Uh, canaster with cadavers and spades with shades, eh? Oh, I like these two. Um, there's nothing else I can really talk about, though. Um... Huh. Do I want to show you anything? Do I want to show you, like, the gem? Doesn't work. Okay, what if I show the potion to you? Nope. Um, I'm gonna do something dumb here. I've just saved, haven't I? Yep, uh, sword. Nope, can't even sword. What about, uh, I don't even have any rocks. Well, there's not a lot else I can really do here, I suppose. Did you hear the joke about the witch's broom? No. That's odd. It's sweeping the valley. Let's just brush that one aside, shall we? Yeah, I know, Derek. I know. I know. But we have to listen to them. This is important. He got us all the way up here. He's drinking his tea. He's got a chance to tell jokes. I mean, I'd take it if I had the chance. Do you know the difference between a cheetor and a comma? Uh, no. A cheetor has claws at the end of its paws, and a comma is a pause at the end of a clause. 
He's having way too much fun with this. He's having way, way too much fun with this. Oh, you. Also, what time of day is it? Mid-afternoon, okay. We probably don't want to do any more. Do you know which has more legs? One cow or no cow? No. Yeah, you're right. No cow has more than four legs. These are too easy. Uh, can I look at the tea? The tea in the cup sitting on the table seems to refill itself as the wizard drinks. Oh, a lovely bit of attention to detail there. That you can look at the tea. That's wonderful. Like, that is some care there. Do you know what time it is when Otto walks through your door? No. Time to get a new door! I could sit here all day. I could genuinely sit here all day. Also, that is a very windy staircase. No! No handrails again! No safety here! Erasmus, you need to deal with that. Do you know what's big purple and eats, uh... Undefleur like dinge? I don't know what that is. No. Big purple underfleur light dinge eaters! Large purple underfleur light dinge eaters are all too common in the forest these days. I don't know what that is either, Derek. You have to rely on somebody who actually knows the language there. I, 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 I don't. This is probably a far more interesting conversation as a wizard. I, I am not, so I'm just sort of here. Is it true that a monster can't hurt you if you're ca- Uh, we- Yes. Actually, it depends on how fast you carry it. Okay, I think we're looping now, so let's, uh, stand up. Not in my house, you don't. Oh. Oh! Um... We just... teleported away. I don't know if that was the right way to leave the house, but, uh... We left the house. So, we are... Not that far away from Irana's piece. We probably want to go... There. Rather than, uh head back to town. 31 stamina should be enough to fight anything if we come across any uh, bad guys. There are a few things that we need to go and uh, fight at some point. There is the ogre. We could try and fight that ogre we found. That would be interesting. Let's see if we can do that. But first, up here. Someone said as well there are a couple of trees that you can try and climb while you are, uh, Oh, no. Oh, no. Can I, can I kill you? I might be able to kill you now. Oh, I can kill you now. Oh, ho! It's dead, of course. Doesn't smell very good either. Do you have any loot at all? You search your opponent. Some of the Cheeto's claws have been broken off or damaged, apparently in battle. You remove the remaining claws and put them away in your pack. Hey, hey! We could defeat Cheetos now! That was not that difficult. Also, inventory, how much do they weigh? Five Cheeto claws and they weigh 0.3 pounds. That was a fine battle. Our stamina is... Oh, it's not bad. We could probably fight another one of them. Oh, we need to replace a, uh, a save now. So, uh, let's delete this one. And, uh, save there. So that next time we have another save slot. That, that was quite a fight. So we can defeat Cheetos now. Also, finding one of those just out in the open. Bit scary. Bit scary. But we can defeat them now. Okay. 172 points, by the way. Hello, bandit! I mean, I will absolutely destroy you. Hello. You don't stand a chance. No way! No way at all. Also, I'll take your money. Uh, eight silvers. Not bad. You know what else I'm gonna buy? One of those ungent potions from the uh, healer at some point, because I feel like we're going to need one. Safe and sound. Let's grab one of these. 
Om nom nom. Delicious. And we shall rest. It's it's getting dark. We don't want to be outside right now. So we'll rest until morning. And then we'll try our hand at defeating that ogre. You sleep comfortably among the fragrant flowers that we are going to pick, by the way. We might as well get a few more of them. You awake as the sun begins to rise. Let's grab some flowers. Two of them. Might as well get some more money. And so, when we come back, folks, we have met the Wizard Erasmus, spoken with him a lot, and defeated our first Cheetor, quite capably. Next time, that ogre. Hopefully. Hopefully. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.